What's up, everyone? I'm Rod Rodriguez here from the After Action Review Podcast, and I'm talking to you about cryptocurrency. Now, if you're not familiar with what cryptocurrency is, you might as well stop right now, go Google what is a Bitcoin and get to it. Highly recommend you read the white paper. Uh, there's a white paper out there written by Satoshi something something. I don't remember the name. I'll put the link down here. You can find it. Uh, either way, it's pretty readable. It gets a little technical near the bottom at that point. You pretty much know everything you need to know about how blockchain worked, what Bitcoin came from. Things are a little different depending on the Bitcoin that you're looking at, but the white paper does a good job. Uh, if not, you don't feel like reading, uh, go to YouTube, click what is Bitcoin? How does Bitcoin work? How does cryptocurrency work? And there are videos that will use really cool little graphics and whatever that will help you understand. That's how I started. So if you want to learn more, more about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, that's how we do it. Start with YouTube. It will prime your brain, prime your uh, understanding of what do you expect. Read the white paper and then go figure it out for yourself. Uh, as far as listening to experts, I want to be very clear. I am not an expert. I am zero expert here. Okay. Uh, I've simply played with some of the cryptocurrency. I did it myself. I'm speaking strictly from my, my experience. I want you to go out there and figure out for yourself, have your own experience to talk from. So with that caveat, I am not a financial expert. I'm not telling you what to invest in. I endorse no coins. Uh, whatever you do with your money is your business, not mine. So, uh, you know, the, the biggest thing you need to know about cryptocurrency is it is the freaking wild west out there right now, okay? It is unregulated. There's no safety net. Wild west guns a blazing kind of stuff. So a lot of other, there's a lot of risk in whatever financial investments you, you do, whatever you put your money into, there's going to be risk. But there's nobody to back you up on this one. No law enforcement, no federal uh, entities, nothing. Uh, literally, somebody could take my money right now and poof, smoke, gone. Uh, that's a kind of a scary thing. And you need to understand that before you jump in the crypto game, before you start putting up baby diaper money and buying uh, Ethereum. Uh, you need to understand that this is not regulated stuff. So risk, 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 risk. With that said, uh, how's it gone for me so far? I jumped on the bandwagon shortly after that big crypto boom. Uh, right around Christmas time. If you were watching the crypto markets, it, everything just shot right through the roof. Uh, Bitcoin went through the roof. Ethereum, Litecoin went through. Every, there's, there's, that's when you started seeing those 80% gains, 125. Um, crazy. It was, people thought, you know, people rode this, this wave and everybody was talking about the bubble, the bubble, the bubble, the crypto bubble. Okay. Well, the bubble burst about a week, Week week ago, I think about a week ago, and you saw everything drop. Uh, an example of would be, uh, you know, um, Ripple. Ripple was hitting was all over the, the headlines. It's the next Bitcoin, yada yada. It went all the way up to almost five dollars and dropped down to like less than a buck. So if you bought at five and it dropped in value to almost one, less than one, you're probably hurting. Uh, but there is, of course, speculation. That's the other piece to this. The other piece is speculation. If you're going to jump into the crypto world, I'm going to tell you right now. Nobody knows what the fuck is going on. Nobody. Don't let anybody convince you, I'm a crypto coin expert. No, you're not. Um, unless you've been on the ground floor, unless you've been in the, the crypto world for a couple of years and, uh, you know, you got some serious credentials like you, I believe a computer engineer right now before I could believe any of these crypto financial experts, because uh, honestly, nobody knows their head from their ass when it comes to crypto. Uh, and if you look at the website, so part of the research piece is, you know, go look up the coin, go look at their website. Well, here's the thing. The coin website's going to tell you uh, what you want to hear, what it takes for you to buy that coin. Uh, this is like going out on, on, a, on your first date and saying, so tell me about all your flaws. Tell me all the things that I could, that could potentially go wrong with this, this relationship. Hell no. They're going to tell you right up front how amazing everything is and what or whatever. So, uh, there are no experts out there. None. 
this is almost like a this is almost like a true gamble. Uh, there is a science. They're not a science, but there's definitely technical as- aspects to investing in crypto. But you've really got to compare. You've really got to get a lot of different pieces of information, compare them yourself, and make a decision. Now, there are experts. They're gonna that are that have different programs that have different uh, columns, different blogs, and they're telling they're gonna say you need to buy Ripple. Ripple is the thing this year, or Dogecoin, <laughs> Dogecoin, or Digibyte, or Ethereum, Dent, whatever. Buy, buy, buy. It's gonna go to five thousand dollars by the end of the year. Listen to what you know when when they when they're talking and they give you their their contact information it's usually going to be an at their company.com and their company is usually a coin trading company and that coin trading company probably has a lot of money invested in the coin that they're telling you to invest in sound familiar it's a lot like the stock market like these jim kramers and all these other talking heads they're telling you to buy what they have money in so they can make a quick buck, to, you know, just dump it, and they got theirs. You're left hanging the, you know, holding the bag. So be very careful about where you get your information, where you get your advice. That's why I said I'm endorsing nothing. Uh, I I did my own research. I've got my own coins that I've 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 invested in. So go out and do your own. Uh, this is an interesting world. So let's talk about. You did your research. You are ready. You've got $2,000. You're ready to drop into something. Before you do that, you have to understand that if you are one of those people that is like, oh, I'm turning off the location device on my phone because the government's going to track me. Or, uh, you know, you've got to, if, if you have a Facebook profile right now that doesn't have your picture or your name on it because you don't want people knowing, uh, you don't want your personal information out there, stop right now. Crypto is not for you. Crypto is not for you. There are ways to get around the anonymity. There are ways to get around anonymity anywhere on the net. Uh, but honestly, you're going down. That's a that's a creepy, not so legal path when it comes to crypto. If you want to do it the legal way, if you want to stay up and up, uh, there is a way to do that. And the way to do that is to get with an exchange. Start with an exchange that is reputable. Now, these reputable exchanges are going to require something from you. you know, get ready for this. If you want to invest, if you want to buy um, any type of crypto, you are going to have to give them two forms of ID and a selfie. So I had to do it. Uh, I use I use Einstein Exchange. Coinbase is another very good, reputable one. Again, not endorsing. I'm just saying what I use and my experience has been so far that they are pretty reputable. Um Coinbase will actually, uh, I think they have an agreement with USAA, so you can actually, you know, if USAA is kind of giving the thumbs up to Coinbase, mm, that's pretty good. Uh, Einstein Exchange is a Canadian company. Either way, any reputable exchange is going to say, hey, look, we need a picture of your uh, ID card. A secondary thing, like a, a bill or statement that that has the same address as the one on your ID card. And third, we want you to take a selfie a selfie of you holding your ID card next to you so they can say, that is really you. A couple of reasons they're doing this. For one, um, everyone's talking about the terrorism thing, like terrorists are using money, uh, crypto to do this and that. Yes, that's probably part of it. The bigger part of it is taxes. Um, right now, again, unregulated uh, you know, Indian territory, but these companies rely on the cooperation from the government to stay in business and to a certain extent. They don't want to get any heat from the government, from the, the countries that they're doing business in. So to do that, some of these countries are saying, hey, look, we want these dudes to pay their taxes on whatever capital gains they make from their investments. So we want you to be able, we want to be able to say, hey, you know, here's a bill. Give us our, give us our, our, our tax money. Um, that's what's coming. That's, that's, it's on the horizon. We haven't gotten there quite yet. You still, if I understand this correctly, it is still up to you, the individual to be honest with uncle Sam, pay your taxes on the amount of money that you gain from your, your crypto. That might change, but that's how it works. That's the security 
in order to make sure you are who you say you are before they'll do business with you. And what they'll do is they'll hit like any good business. They'll take your money. They'll take your money before any ID verification is done. So you can give them two grand and say, I want to buy $2,000 for the Bitcoin, which would be something 0. 0.00 something. We'll get into that. But let's say you want to buy uh, one light corn, light, one light coin, not light corn, although I'm pretty sure there's probably a, a coin for that. One light coin for $200. And they'll give it to you. Too easy. It's an exchange. You give them $220, whatever. And that 220 with that 20, there's a, there's a charge. They're going to, oh, you, they charge you. So there's a transaction fee to get your Litecoin or whatever cryptocurrency you want. But again, we're going to kind of go into that in a minute. In a minute. Um, there's an exchange. There's a, there's a, a transaction fee and they'll give you your coin. So that's great. Say in a week, your $200 Litecoin is now worth $600 and you want to cash out. Stop right there. You cannot cash out until you are verified. It's a way to keep the money is secure. So you're not going anywhere with your $600 Litecoin. You can uh, use, I don't even think you can actually, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can't sell it or trade it. It's just stuck, stuck in limbo. Uh, you can't put that into USD, US dollars until your account is verified. Then you got to do it. You pay your transaction fee. You got to pay another transaction fee and they'll tr turn that into USD and then USD can get transferred to whatever bank accounts you want. That's how that piece works. So if you're uh, worried about the government coming to take your babies, uh, again, crypto, not for you, 100% not for you. Uh, you might want to go down the Silk Road path. Good luck with the feds. So, yeah. Uh, so you've been verified and you are hearing about some hot altcoin. Now, altcoin is an alternative coin. All right. So the big ones are Ethereum. Oh, well, let's start with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the, the daddy Mac of all the, all the, uh, uh, cryptocurrency. So you got Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ripple. Uh, there's a couple more. But those are the kind of the big ones right now. Uh, big exchanges, that's where you, you, so it's almost like a hub. So let's start with hub one, your Coinbase or your, your Einstein exchange. There is where you buy your Bitcoin. Now there's a 1,000, I think right now I, I, I saw today, it was 1,438 different coins you can purchase. Cryptocurrency coins, 1,438 different ones. There are different exchanges, small ones, uh, that will work with altcoins, alternative coins. But most of them, pretty sure almost all of them, go from Bitcoin to altcoin. That is the, that is the currency of use to buy your altcoin. So uh, I'm going to use an altcoin called RDD. It's called Redcoin. So let's say you got you had an idea in your head or you heard a tip or one of these guys said, oh, red coins going to explode this year. You should buy as much of it as you can. And you're like, I need to buy red coin. Yobit, I think, sells red coin. Um, pretty sure it's Yobit and some other one. But let's say you go to Yobit and they're in another exchange. Their account, way easier to do. No verification because it's strictly Bitcoin. Okay. You can, you get your wallet, you send them your however money, however much money you want to invest. So to your two grand in Bitcoin. So you buy your Bitcoin from Coinbase. You send that money down to Yobit in their Bitcoin wallet. Again, you're going to get charged a fee. From there, you're going to buy your Yobit. Um, you're going to buy your red coin. So at the Yobit exchange with the Bitcoin you purchased at Coinbase, you're going to buy your red coin. You have to be familiar. You got to get familiar. You got to get familiar with um, using the percentages, the 0 .005, uh, 0 .0005 of a uh, Bitcoin. That's how it works. So you got to get familiar with looking at the value of a Bitcoin, understanding this is how much it is in USD at any given time. Don't forget the, the value of your Bitcoin is going to fluctuate. So if you buy $500 worth, $2,000 worth of Bitcoin right now, and you go to invest it uh, tomorrow night, or tomorrow morning, uh, you're going to go put, you're going to buy five, 
hundred, you're going to buy a uh, 0.0006, whatever, of uh, Bitcoin. And at the time you purchased it, that was worth $500. Tomorrow morning, it could be worth 400, 300. So caution, if you're going to do your exchange, you're going to go buy your red coin, do it quickly. Transfer your Bitcoin into your Yobit wallet, then buy your RDD. Call it a day. Don't wait too long because you just don't know what the fluctuation is going to be, what the value of Bitcoin is going to be at the time you're purchasing. So, uh, Yobit, you buy your red coin, you have a red coin wallet, and it's all kept digitally there. Now, you got a couple of different ways to store your money. There's a digital wallet you can store on your laptop. And that is the most secure way because wherever your laptop goes, it goes, it's like, it's like a literal wallet. Uh, that's pretty cool. But somebody steals your laptop, somebody steals your wallet. There's no way to get that money back. Again, Wild West, no insurance, nothing. Your money's gone, it's gone. Uh, so a lot of people keep it a digital wallet with the exchange. A little safer, maybe, depending on who you're doing business with. Um, and that's how that works. Okay. So, uh, a lot of people keep their money there, or you can keep your digital wallet on your person, essentially. Uh, once that's done, now you've, now you can, now you have, uh, you know, $500 worth of RDD and Yobit. You've got your $500 of Bitcoin at, at Yobit and you got another $600 worth of Bitcoin at Coinbase. You're waiting to find the, the super altcoin you're going to invest in. And you're going to open an account with those guys. It's really easy to get lost with accounts, um, depending on what you want to invest in. Now, how did you hear about RDD? Why was that important to you? Uh, you Somebody said, oh, RDD is going to be exploding. And you're like, you, you're convinced it's going to be a big thing. You go to the website. The website is not going to tell you anything. It's going to tell you a little bit about who's involved in the projects. And a lot of Bitcoin speculators, that's how they make their choices, depending on the teams behind that particular coin. Um, but here's the thing about the crypto market. It is completely fucking irrational. It is stupid nuts. Nobody's making any sense. A perfect example of that would be Dogecoin. Uh, if you're not familiar with what Doge is, it's that little dog. It's like a, uh, it's like this little yellow dog. It's like a Japanese or Korean dog. I think it's Japanese. But uh, either way, it was actually a, uh, it was a joke. It was a parody coin that suddenly gained value, and it's now worth 0. 0.0001 American cent. Uh, but people have bought it in bulk. We're talking thousands and thousands. They're trading it. It's actually gaining money. It, It's making people money. But it's a parody coin. It, it's a joke that people made into real money. So again, Wild West, guys, doesn't make any fucking sense. None. Uh, but it's still a way to make money. So if you can capitalize on the insanity of crypto you can turn a good dollar. Uh, but again, do your own research. <laughs> do your own research. Um, wallets. I want to go back to wallets really quick. There's a difference between Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. Two different coins. If I try to transfer $500 of Bitcoin and I accidentally selected a Bitcoin cash wallet, I'm going to lose my money. There are ways that some, some sometimes the system will be like, nope, you can't do it. That's not a Bitcoin wallet. Mm, there are some times where it's going to be like, oh, you know what? Uh, your money's gone. Your mistake just cost you $500. Sucks to be you. Uh, don't ask Yobit. Don't ask Coinbase. Don't ask any of those guys for help. They're going to tell you you're out of luck. Sucks to be you. That's it. Um, so be very careful about what you're putting your money in, which wallets you're putting your money into, your, your Bitcoin. The Bitcoin cash and the Bitcoin logo look almost identical. The difference in the Bitcoin cash and the Bitcoin logo is one of the logo Bs is leaning to the left and the other one is leaning to the right. That's it. You got to be very careful. So... Uh, you know, when you're moving your money between wallets, 
This is like a sensitive transaction. This is like you're moving nukes, all right? Make sure you double check, triple check what you're doing, all right? So what's it like over here? What's it like over here? All right, do the same, exchange, we're good. Bitcoin can get a little scary. A lot of the other coins, uh, if I wanna transfer Yobit, Redcoin to somewhere else or whatever, it goes quick, super fast. Bitcoin can take a little longer, depending on the time of day, how many transact, what the volume, trading volume is, and where you're trading from. It could take anywhere from an hour, a couple hours. Uh, my first transaction took three hours almost to transfer my Bitcoin to my other exchange from Coinbase to my other exchange. Uh, that took almost three hours. The whole time I was sweating, thinking, oh my God, I just lost money. I just lost a lot of money because I effed something up, uh, whatever. Don't worry. Don't freak out. Uh, give it some time. And the, your trans if you did everything correctly and you're, you're, you check the blocks and you know what you're doing, you know you did right, um, you will be okay. Just don't freak out. Uh, my experience so far, I made a little money. I lost a little money. I, I think right now we're breaking about even. The market is being dictated by emotion. Now, if you've ever played the stock market, uh, you know that the human factor is the biggest and stupidest one in the whole thing. Perfect example. Uh, somebody put out an article, somebody, there was a rumor that, okay, let's back up. The first rumor was that, uh, one of the big coin, I think it was Coinbase, Coinbase was not going to pick up Ripple as one of their core coins. So remember I said they, they, they you know, they deal with Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, I think, um, they were going to pick up Ripple as one of their core, which means that another place to do big business, and this was going to be a big thing for Ripple, um, didn't go through. Suddenly, everybody's like, oh, no, Coinbase, they don't want Ripple. No one's going to want Ripple. Ripple is trash. Kill it. Burn it with fire. Sell it all. Great. People picked that ball up and ran with it. Around the same time, Bitcoin's value starts dropping. Not all it, it becomes like, chaos, mayhem. The crypto market just gets gutted in front of everybody. All of a sudden, these experts are coming out. Um, cryptocurrency is getting, it's tanking. Nobody's going to, it's going to, the bubble is bursting. What did Rupert Murdoch say? Rupert Murdoch said this, that, that, that. Um, uh, Warren Buffett says, great one, great, great example. Uh, war, headline, Warren Buffett says crypto is going to end badly. People saw that and started selling their crypto. Okay. Read the article. He says, I don't think it's going to end well. But then again, I don't know anything about cryptocurrency. Uh, I stick with things that I know, and I don't know this. Okay, I get it. Warren Buffett is a very rich dude, uh, very well respected, and he knows his stuff. He knows the stuff that he knows. He's telling you, I know nothing about this. Nothing. I just got a bad feeling about it. Okay. Let's rewind for a moment. This is the rewind hand signal, apparently. Let's rewind to early 90s when the internet was taking off. Everybody was like, oh, it's a fad. It's a kid thing. Nobody's going to care about, uh, nobody's going to think about, you know, uh, the internet twice come two years, three years, five years. Suddenly, here we are. We're on the internet. You're watching this on the internet. You're listening to this on the internet. It is still a big relevant thing, uh, but that's how it is. That's exactly, I mean, that's just the nature of the beast. Um, people are going to mock, people are going to, they're going to have naysayers, the doomsayers. It's, it's you know, uh, crypto is for uh, millennials. Okay. A lot of non-millennials are making a lot of money right now off of crypto. Uh, so again, it's a market that is dictated by emotions and a lot of people had these feelings, these gut instincts, and they just went with it. They sold, they bought, they sold, they bought. The market is now kind of, it's its coming back to some type of equilibrium. Um, do, does that mean that we're, we're rational again? Absolutely not. Um, Kodak. Kodak 
announced they're going to jump into crypto. Kodak, you remember the camera people? The camera folks, they're jumping into crypto market. So what happens after they announce their crypto market uh, announcement? We're making a crypto coin, a Kodak coin. Their stocks jumped 125%. 125% their stocks. They haven't even put a freaking coin out. There's, there's, no, there's no Kodak coins. They get released on January 31st. Is that rational? When's the last time you bought a Kodak product? Think about that. When's the last time do you even look in your house? Do you own a Kodak product? And their stock jumped 125% simply because they announced they're getting jump in the crypto market. Okay. Cool. Uh, you'd be surprised that some of the people that are that are coming out and saying they're going to do uh, a crypto coin. Telegram just announced they're about to start a crypto coin. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Again, Wild West. So, emotion will dictate a lot of this. If you're okay with the roller coaster, then jump in. Uh, do I think this is a reasonable investment? I think it is. And I'll tell you why. Because of the emotional volatility that dictates the market. I kind of like that. Um, if you're good at reading the feel, the zeitgeist of something, you might do well in this. If you're good at reading people, you'll probably do pretty well in, in crypto because you can look at, I use Feedly. I'm gonna give you my own little personal tip here. I use Feedly and Feedly is a news, uh, it's like RSS reader. So it, I put in the different things that I'm looking for and it brings me all the different news articles. I'll look at that every day and scan the headlines and depending Depending on what that headlines, what are the headlines saying? What is the general feel of not necessarily what is the real, what is reality? What is the feel people are going to get from looking at these headlines? If the headlines are saying, uh, this is, this is a big deal, blah, blah, blah. I know where we're headed. Now it doesn't mean I'm going to buy in and start buying a bunch of crap that the, the news is spoon feeding me, but it does tell me whether I can relax this week a little bit, that that I not to not to be surprised by a drop, or if people are saying some stupid crap, like uh, for example, uh, the Korean government is cracking down on crypto, they're gonna ban it, they're gonna ban crypto completely, and Russia's gonna do it too, and then China's gonna do it too, and then crypto's gonna die. Oh, sweet Jesus! All right, buckle up. It's just be ready for the ride everything's going to drop, which is great. Listen, guys, if it's me, when things drop, I will pick it up. I picked up some, some good crypto at a premium when everything fell apart. Cool. Cool Z for me. Um, but I'm also accepting the risk that that pickup may not mean anything if everything does go to shit. Uh, cryptocurrency may be banned. Uh, China is already talking about uh, the power consumption that takes place to mine these crypto coins, uh, they're saying that they're they're gonna they're gonna ban uh, these crypto farms. If you don't know how they're crypto farming, really quick primer for this, and please go out there and do your own research on how this all works. But basically, they took a bunch of um, audio uh, video uh, video cards, which are great processors, by the way, for mining. They're very fast, they're very efficient, and they create these warehouses, essentially, that have to be cooled, and these computer, these uh, these processors are basically mining for Bitcoin. If you don't understand the mining piece, they're basically solving very complex mathematical problems, and the solutions have to look a certain way, and if it looks that way, that's a Bitcoin, and it gets registered in the blockchain that is everybody using uh, Bitcoins. That's a blockchain. Everybody's kind of in it confirming and, uh, you know, dealing transactions and everything. But anyways, China's saying that there's so much energy consumption because, because the energy is super cheap in China. People started building their farms out there to mine for Bitcoin and other, uh, you know, cryptos that basically they're sucking up one, you mine one Bitcoin is sucking up so much energy. It's almost like a small town uh, for one Bitcoin. So 
China's saying, we're going to ban them. Oh, come on, man. You really think they're going to ban this? Do you know how many, how much money that, hey, uh, you're making too much noise in that gold mine. We're going to kick you out. Oh, really? You're going to kick, you're going to kick them out. Or are you just going to charge them a lot more? These companies are producing so much money mining that uh, China could definitely use that cash. They're not going to say no to it. So, of course, you're not going to throw the miner out for making too much money, you know, uh, making noise while he digs up his gold. You're going to charge him a premium for it. Same thing with Korea, South Korea. They're like, oh, the government's going to crack down. No, I'm pretty sure the government's going to get their money. The government's going to want cash. I could be wrong. I could be really wrong. Uh, again, this is me speculating. But really, what, what's the incentive of, of banning anything? The only thing is they're like, oh, it's competing with the, the, the financial markets. It's messing up the bank systems. Who do you think owns a lot of this crypto crap? The banks. Why not? Ripple was designed to be a financial institution of currency. An inter, in, inter-financial institution currency. I believe that's what Ripple was designed to do. Uh, Bitcoin is being used all over the world by uh, banks and by very wealthy people uh, for illicit purposes like money laundering, like storing money offshore accounts to evade taxes. Uh, there's a lot of people who have a lot invested in keeping your cryptocurrency alive. Leave it to the criminals to pave the way for the rest of us to make an honest dollar. Uh, again, I could be wrong. I could be very wrong about all of this. Tomorrow, crypto could be, they hit the switch. They're like, ah, Bitcoin, sorry, we're just kidding. Kidding. Uh, but then again, let's look at, let's be optimistic. Maybe this is the beginning of even bigger things. Uh, who knows? Back in 2011, I believe uh, Bitcoin was worth $7. $7. In 2011. Today, uh, I think it's at like 14, 14,000 today. Maybe, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. Either way, um, I'm enjoying my time with crypto. I think it's going to be very valuable. I think it's the future. I really do. I think it's here to stay. I think crypto is here to stay. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised in the future if when you got hired somewhere, they were like, hey, we can pay you in all USD, all USD, or we'll pay you 70% USD, 30% crypto. Wouldn't that be weird? Like you could, every check you get, you get a certain amount of money in US dollars and then you get cryptocurrency. Maybe your company has their own coin. And they start handing that out as cash, as, as, as currency. And depending on how well the company does, dictates the value of that coin. So people could be sitting on thousands and thousands of coins. Their company goes super large to get bought by Google. And suddenly, it's everyone's going Sizzler. You know what I'm saying? Everyone's out there buying the islands. That could be it. Uh, but that's one guy's humble speculation. Um, do I think this is an invaluable investment for entrepreneurs? Do I think you're going to make your startup money? Listen, guys, don't invest money. You're not afraid to lose. If you're putting all your eggs in one basket, and you're like, I'm going to go all in crypto. Well, then you better be prepared to fail and and, and lose all crypto. Um, I think we're in a point, though, with crypto that you could probably make a hell of a good killing if you're patient, if you do your research, and you know how to use your stops and your buys and your sells. Set it up so that we uh, put it out of your, I, I, if it were me and I was going to make this type of investment, I would put it out as saying, if money drops below this point that I, this is my point that I cannot personally feel comfortable keeping money in the market, sell everything and I'll take my loss. And this point is when I'm willing to, uh, you know, sell when it reaches a high enough point that it covers my transaction fees and it reaches a, a critical price point that I wanted that I targeted. So if my target is 30%, I do the calculation. I say, okay, I'm buying 
this currency at this amount, the transaction fee would be this, and I'm going to sell at 30% of what I'm paying in. No matter if this thing goes 125%, I only want to make my 30% or my 40% or my 15%, whatever it is you feel comfortable doing, set that up so it happens automatically. Take the human emotion out of it because if you don't, a lot of people would be like, oh my God, we hit 30%. Ah, man, maybe we might hit 40. We might hit 50. It's that gambler's thing that happens. You know, you're winning and you think, I can win one more. I can win one more. I can win one more. And then you lose your ass. If you want to just make 30% and you think that it's via, it is a, a, a very viable thing, set up your stop loss, set up your stop pay, set up, I'm sorry, set up your, your buying, your, your, you set up your, your sells. There you go. Set up your sell ahead of time. You don't have to think about it. Then you, you just leave the market. Leave it completely. Don't ignore it. Don't look at it because you're going to want to move shit. Leave it alone. And then be pleasantly surprised when you end up with the money in your bank account. And you're like, what was that from? Oh, yeah, the Bitcoin hit. Um, yeah. So if that's your way to go, I, I think that right now the, the market is so volatile, so crazy that it's not impossible to get 125% gain on something or maybe more realistically would be like 30% return on your investment within two, three weeks. Flip that coin, flip that coin. It's also very possible for you to lose 30% of your investment in two weeks. So remember that um, it can go both ways. It just depends on how you wanna play this game. Uh, it, you're gonna get the, the turnarounds on this are remarkable and devastating. So remember that. All right, that does it for me. Thank you for listening. I hope that uh, it helped you out a little bit. Um, I got a couple of episodes in the shoot, and I'm in. You know, they're gonna be great. I'm really looking forward to them. Uh, I hope you didn't hear my stomach growling. Uh, I need to go eat. I'm hungry. All right, that does it for me. I will see you. Let's do that again because my finger was down here. You know, up here. Oh. I will see you at the next episode.